What is going on? Welcome back to Just Giants with Grump and the Cranky Fan. It is the best damn podcast for the best damn football <laughs> team. That's right. Uh, not just in this country, but across the world. Because the Giants are going to England, uh, I guess, to, today, when you guys are hearing this, right? They fly out Thursday, I believe? That is correct. And we yeah. will be uh, joining them this evening. So, yes. <laughs> very excited. Yeah, yeah. The Giants Trump are playing the Packers. Right now he's so excited. <laughs> no, I just, I, I'm, I'm excited. This is great. The best team in the world, not just the country. Um, in, a, in a sport that is only played here. For the most part, um, <laughs> world Giant, champions. Giants are yes, that's right. That's what their Super Bowl ring from 2011 says: yes, World that's... Champions. Correct. Um, and uh, they will be holding that reputation uh, going forward. So the Giants <laughs> going to England to play the Packers. I am excited. You're excited. Um, what is probably the most exciting part about this game that we know of right now? Well. Grump, I'm going to be very honest. The 60 minutes that we're playing are probably the least exciting part of the trip. <laughs> it's very scary with uh, the condition of this team with health-wise and stuff where, you know, Daniel Jones, we're hoping is going to play. But, you know, if he's not 100% or he can't play, this could turn into, you know, a rugby match that they're familiar with over there in England. So um, I'm excited about just getting over there, you know, showing you – that cool city, we'll do some sightseeing, have some pints, meet some friends. But the game itself could be pretty scary. Well, if that's going to be the least interesting part, that sucks. Because we're going to do a whole episode on that 60 minutes. Uh, oh, so. I'm not saying I'm not into it. I'm just saying if, you know, in, in context of everything else, that may be the one part that we don't want to remember. After. Yeah, maybe. Let's see. So the Giants, <laughs> for, for all of you on the East Coast that will be watching this game, will be 9 a.m. at Tottenham. We never figured out what time it will be for us over there. Uh, but <laughs> not really your problem, is it? Um, so this Sunday when you wake up and you have your bangers and mash and your breakfast beer, um, put on the Giant game, and uh, you will get to see Daniel Jones playing, in my opinion. So today, Daniel Jones... Uh, in the portion of practice open to the media, which, by the way, was inside at Quest Diagnostics Center because it's been raining in New Jersey for literally the last five fucking days. And it's been awful. Small side note, fall is the worst season of all four seasons for this fucking reason. Anyway, um, in which, by the way, there's turf on the inside in Quest Diagnostic. Um, it's If it's not the exact same as the MetLife turf, it feels similar. I've, I've been in and, and on both. So. And the way it works at, in, at Tottenham is they have a grass field for soccer, but underneath the grass field is a synthetic turf field for football. It's permanently there because they host two games a year, and they built that stadium with the NFL in mind. So it's not on grass, the field, it, the game. It's actually on artificial turf. Which is going to play uh... – into it's going to factor in because this is going to be a rainy game at least mm -hmm. this far into the future the weather says that it's going to rain um and so if this were playing on grass i'd be pretty concerned to be honest i mean we've seen what the london games look like when they are on grass in the rain yeah in the past. yeah it, it, it is a slop and, fest and it's also a little different the way the pitch is um for soccer it's not the same how a football field is it's crowned differently so um uh, it's a different impact on how you're running and stuff, I think, for football. So it's a little something to keep in mind. But this is an a NFL field, so it's, they shouldn't have any of those issues here. Correct. And um, Daniel Jones, like I said, was running during the media portions, looked almost identical to the way he looked on Sunday in those clips. I acknowledge also that he was a limited participant. Uh, there's also a good chance that as soon as the media left, he sat and didn't do anything else. Um, but nevertheless, you know, I'm going to make a petition now. If he plays, if he starts this game and finishes this game, I think we just change him from Daniel Jones to Daniel Motherfucker Jones. I think that officially becomes his name uh, on this podcast. Motherfucker Jones. How's that? Motherfucker Jones. <laughs> and and it, sure. I mean, it should extend beyond this podcast. Um, I've been pretty I, – I, I mean, Daniel Jones's toughness I don't think has ever really been a question even going back no. to his days at Duke or anything like that. But I, I don't know. DJ has always been the guy who wants to play. We've seen that. We've criticized uh, coaches for that, you know, with his uh, calf injury. I don't know what year was that, 2019? Yes. 
um, things like that. He's always going to want to play, and, and you know that's great. But usually, when he wanted to play in the past, you could tell that he shouldn't be playing in the mm-hmm. clips that we saw. Like you tell, like definitely favoring. Um, you know, ineffective in what he's trying to do because of it. These clips did not look like that to me. I don't know. You saw them, right? Yeah, I'm. I have a slightly different opinion. I mean, yes, we could mf a Molly Wan for having courage and guts and wanting to play, but you know, you should be that the way you should be as a quarterback. No, I know just... it's not for wanting to play. It's if he starts and finishes this game. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. Um, I just again. I appreciate that very much that, you know, if he can get through a game like this, but I really want this coaching staff and it's really their decision. It's more so than Daniel Jones because we know Daniel Jones just wants to play. We still have, you know, 11 games after this week and we have a potential, no matter how we look on, you know, with the eye test of possibly competing for a wild card spot and just to play in week five, you know, just to say, well, I got through it and, putting himself in a position that he could be injured further and being out for a significant amount of time and not only sabotaging a playoff run, but just you saw what happened last year. And now that um, our backup quarterback is out, this season can go really south for all the things of developing and implementing this offense going forward for the rest of the year. So while, you know, I admire him for gutting it out and, you know, whatever he's doing to get himself healthy to play this week. But if this coaching staff sees that, you know, he's in, there's impediments, like he's not, he's not moving well, or he can't plant or, you know, there's a limp or anything. I don't want this to be a, who's got the bigger slong contest, get him out of there. And we'll just, we'll, we'll deal with next week, next week. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I I agree with that, but that I think the reason why I'm optimistic is that from what we've seen already, like like I said, comparatively to what we saw in the past when he tried to play through injury, um, I, I think it's pretty obvious that this is not as serious in the past. Uh, well, uh, certainly there was no specification on whether it was a high ankle sprain or not. I I seriously doubt at this point if he was running around on a Wednesday from a Sunday high ankle sprain that that's even possible. I, I just hope that wasn't just a photo op to like get out there and just run. So it looks like it, even though he really can't, or, you know, possibly made things worse. I, I, I saw- agree with that, but, but, but so here's my thing. I, seeing those clips for me didn't sell me on anything. What sold me was that they had brought in because now you have Tarod Taylor almost definitely can't go. Um, right. Uh, coming off the concussion, it is also his fourth concussion in the last five years, which I didn't even realize until today. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I'm going to say Terod Taylor is probably out from the get-go here. But mm-hmm. So they had three really bad, three quarterbacks in for workouts uh, Tuesday. And they were Jake Fromm, A.J. McCarron, and Brian Lewerke, all of which are familiar with either the Giants or Brian Dable. Um from the reports that we saw, I think it was Ryan Dunleavy said that Brian Lewerke was the most impressive of the three. He checked out of his hotel room this morning and did not receive a contract. That, to me, if on Wednesday afternoon there are no quarterbacks that are – there's no way that they go with just Davis Webb without somebody else active. So, to me, Daniel Jones is definitely going to be active for this game. It is – a question of, to your point of the the photo op, whether that is going to be smokescreen for Green Bay or not, yeah. or if they're or if they're just practicing to see how he is. I mean, it could be. It in all honesty, we're sitting here like everything is a game and everything is, skept, is skeptical. This honestly could have just been an evaluation day. Sure, for sure. And you know something, maybe they just had him work out for. You know, again, we can't see only the media availability. He might have practiced another ten minutes and called it a day. We don't know. Um, you know, the other option too could be that. They just have Davis Webb, and the emergency backup plan is just running the Wildcat with Saquon again, too, just to get through a game. I mean, the amount that we pass lately, it doesn't. <laughs> it's not the worst option in the world. No, I mean, again, I, I don't want to look at individual games where there clearly is a completely different game plan from game to game as an indictment on how often we pass. I don't. I don't think that i think it's you know they know what they have at wide receiver they know what they have at the interior of offensive line available right now and Mm -hmm. they weigh that against other ways that they can win in individual matchups uh 
but I, I know I'm, I was saying that a little bit as, as a joke, but also, you know, I, it, if you're going to bring in a quarterback off the street to expect him to be ready to play three, four days later, I mean, I, okay, they have familiarity with the, with the playbook, but again, well, you know, you know what it's like. You go on. They, they would be a break, backup to Davis Webb. They, they wouldn't. Right. They wouldn't have been the the one well, that's, playing. That's the thing. So that, that to me is like you know if they if they looked at these guys and they just looked bad, it's like well you know something maybe we just rather run the Wildcat than bring one of these scrubs. I in. don't think so. Uh, that I don't think. But just it's just to get through one week and then nope. you know don't think so. The following nope. week. Zero zero percent that that is correct. Zero zero. Be- only because they have Davis Webb is not a fucking noob. And Davis Webb is absolutely active. So th- there's no scenario in which they're like, in the event of injury, we're, we'd rather go to the Wildcat than have a, a, an actual quarterback out there, to me. There's no scenario where that's at. Um, to me, this solidifies that Daniel Jones is active. Mm-hmm. Solidifies, in my opinion. Again, but also, you know, I guess you're also playing the odds in a bit of a you know a risk reward too. It's like, what are the odds really that Davis Webb is going to get hurt? I think you kind of roll the dice a little bit, and if he does get hurt, you just, again, just get through a game, and then then you reevaluate on the flight home. What do we do next week? Right, and uh, I, I had jokingly said last night that, uh, I mean, I, it wasn't a joke. It sounded like a joke <laughs> because initially it was meant to be, but the more I thought about it, the more true it actually was. That I was, I was stoked to fly halfway around the world uh, to see. Davis Webb bring the thunder, potentially. <laughs> well, my wife. To be decided... honest with you, if if he went out there and even if we lost, but if he ran around the field and threw passes in the exciting way he did in the preseason, I know not the same. I know, but the London game is always weird. London games are always weird. Um, there was a chance that that could have been an exciting game. It still can be, uh, mm-hmm. and I I could say that I got to see it. So I mean, I, I would actually be 100% legitimately stoked to see Davis Webb run around out there. It would be the only time, you know what I mean? Like, has he had any NFL, like, starts or anything of I, consequence other than, like, maybe a couple snaps? Maybe a couple snaps here and there. I don't ever remember him starting anywhere. I know my wife would be excited because she went to Cal and it would be a battle of two Cal quarterbacks between Aaron Rodgers and Davis Webb. But, you know, clearly the top. <laughs> that's the reason why we're going truly. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, yeah. I mean, when, when you compartmentalize it down to being at the game and as, as opposed to, uh oh, you know, we're going to lose. We have no quarterback and just having the worst three hours of our life. Yeah, sure. You know, let him. Let him sling it around. Let's see what he can do. I mean, I don't want him to come in if he has to and just hand the ball off every single time. I'd like to see him try to make plays. But I I, I don't know. I'm 50-50 on, on Daniel Jones. I, you know, I saw how he looked coming off the field Sunday. He couldn't move. You know, I know what I saw in the tape. I know what the, what the, what the conversation is. But he also has to fly six hours in a plane, you know, that does something to your body. And let's see how the ankle holds up from like, you know, being, cause you get all puffy on a plane. You feel weird. You're going to find out when we land Friday morning, you're going to feel a little out of sorts. You know, how's that going to, it, it, it may sound kind of silly, but that may impact his ankle a little bit. It may stiffen it up or something. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I, I don't know. Um, to me, what we had seen in the past when Jones was hurt and trying to play, we what we saw today, we would have typically seen on a Friday. That's what I'm. That's what I'm basing. I'm basing off of. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's not what he did. It's when he did it. It's for it's me. more encouraging. It happened today and not Friday. Absolutely. That's that's, that's what I'm saying. Like normally, yeah. in in times past, in years past, when Jones was trying to play through injury, he would do fucking nothing until Friday. Mm-hmm. Um. So, and again, I'm he not also, banking on it. To me, this is just solidifying that he'll be active. That's this it. Is I'm also, not sure he's going to start. This is also how this coaching staff has taken injuries, the way they've dealt with it, even during training camp and stuff. I think the old staff was more like, you know, just sit back and relax and watch practice, where if you had like a, you know, an arm injury, it's like, I want you running. I want you on the bike. I want you doing something. So I think this coaching staff has a little different um, uh, way they handle injuries and in, in keeping people you know, prepared. So like their body doesn't just fall apart for the week while they're not practicing because of something else. Um, 
Yeah, I don't, I don't really know how I feel about how this coaching staff is handling injury just yet. Um, mainly because we've been very hurt and guys haven't really gotten better yet. Uh, I'm not blaming yeah. the coaching staff for people getting hurt. I'm just saying, like, right. Kadarius Tony just keeps winding up on the injury report. And I know that that's not just this coaching staff's, like, fault or anything like that. But it's that's too also, early for me. I, I'm not going to make any judgment based and, on how— And part of that, too, is also, like, you know, there's so much trying to give misinformation and being sure. secretive. If we knew the truth about what was going on with Kadarius Tony, it might make a whole lot more sense. If they came out right off the bat and said, he has this injury to this, we expect— X amount of weeks, you have a whole different perspective than this. Well, he's on the report. Yeah. Oh, really? We didn't know what what, what happened. Yeah, but he like he showed up on, on on Friday, just like exactly. on, on the injury report, and didn't play Sunday, and then didn't right. play the next week, and didn't practice. However, Kadarius Tony was listed as a limited participant today with that hamstring. Same thing with Wandale Robinson. Same thing with Leonard Williams, Evan Neal. Fabian Moreau, this is a big one, showed up with a foot injury limited. Now, that's massive because Aaron Robinson was sent to IR Mm -hmm. with his knee injury that he sustained on Sunday. Um, And Cordell Flott still hasn't practiced with his calf injury. So behind behind (laughs) Fabian Moreau, in my opinion, the next guy I would be— Dude, I don't even know. I guess you moved He might be the guy in the pub we meet Friday night. He might be there on your quarterback. Um, Yeah, I I don't know. Um, That's scary. I'm I'm worried about that. Yeah, Uh, because we're not facing Justin Fields this week. We're facing Aaron Rodgers. Would you say he's the best quarterback in the NFC? uh, If you were picking sides and you needed one quarterback to start, I think I would still take him. I, I don't I mean, think he has who the else is in the, Who's in the conversation in the NFC? Is it just Tom Brady and uh, Dak Prescott? Are, are, you, are you ready to do it yet? The, uh, the Jalen Hurts thing? <laughs> no. I okay. believe in that team more than I believe in him. Okay. He, he's like another guy where like he's a runaround guy. He's got a fairly strong arm, and he's got such a good team that it makes shit easy for him. He falls into that same like Dak Prescott kind of thing where it's like – I think Dak on a on a team that's just average is bad. Um, Jalen Hurts, we saw what he looked like on a team that was actually good. Um, and I understand also, you know, it was the first year with that coach and whatever. But yeah, I'm not I mean, ready to say any, it yet with Jalen. Anybody Hurts. like in the others can, getting votes category or guys like uh, <laughs> what's his name in uh, in, in Arizona? Kyler but he's Murray. not. He's not top 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 tier. <laughs> Not top Russell Wilson's that gone. Height. He's in the other conference. Matt Stafford. Uh, <sighs> yeah, I don't think I, he doesn't touch Aaron Rodgers, right? No, he doesn't. Uh, Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins. No. Um, I'm trying to go through the uh, Garoppolo. No. Uh, Jameis. No. No. Mariota. Who the hell was even in Atlanta? I can't even remember. <laughs> I don't. Know who knows? Yeah, I mean, the quarterbacks are kind of, eh. Yeah, the NFC doesn't have a lot. Of, so, in my opinion, Aaron Rodgers is the best NFC quarterback. I, I didn't think that that was even going to be a debate. but um, well, Let me ask you something. Just, you know, I did some research on some numbers. Four games in, where do you think their passing offense is ranked in the league? Um, It's probably bad. They were, they've been kind of shoddy and off. Um, But I don't think any of that really has to do with Rodgers, although I'll admit that I haven't been because of the... Yeah, I'm just talking about the, the passing game as a whole. Like, you, you know, you have to talk about our passing game. It's not just, you know, the heroics of Daniel Jones. It's the passing right. game as a unit. Well, what so. I was going to say, well, th- this kind of opens up to the analysis, but they've, they've had some injuries with... Uh, sorry, some issues with their offensive line, mm-hmm. uh, and that hasn't helped. And I think also Aaron Rodgers tends to, like, have cold starts to the year or oh he's awful starts. last year remember he got blown out last year and yeah but I, I, he to me he's either super hot to start the year or super cold and then mm-hmm. it, it doesn't matter because at the end of the season he's always Aaron Rodgers they're 12 and 4 and yeah, away exactly. we go exactly um, they are 18th in the league in passing offense but yeah, they are say, but also but they're they're seventh right. in rushing yeah. offense well so that's the thing all right so let's get to uh we kind of covered most of the injuries there i mean if, if something else comes up we'll talk about it but Playing defense against this Packers team is going to be hard. Um, I know that they kind of looked crappy against New England. Um, 
who is playing a third string quarterback, but also I think if there's if there's a head coach that can win with a third string quarterback and make it look natural, is it not Bill Belichick? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm not yeah. really gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lose my mind over that. Um, <laughs> but so like the way I see it, there other than their offensive line issues, which I'm gonna get to in a second, the Packers have two really good running backs, AJ Dillon and uh, what's his face. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's possible that the worst wide receiver on their team is better than our best at this point. Um, <laughs> they have a much. really, really solid young rotation of Alan Lazard, Christian Watson, Romeo Dubs, Randall Cobb. Um, and in addition to the game's best QB, it's a team I just don't expect the Giants to keep up with if they're not 100% healthy, and they absolutely aren't. I um, wouldn't expect them even to keep up if they were 100% healthy, to be very honest. I, mean, in, I think in this stage if, they were 100, if they were 100% healthy, the way the Packers are playing now, I think they could hang around. I don't. Um, I don't know, man. Yeah, I mean, did, how, did you watch the Packers Patriots game? Yes, I did. Okay. But I'm just saying, at our 100% healthy, I don't know. I mean, the, the Packers at any moment can, they can dial up 35, 40 points, and we cannot, at our healthiest right now, get into that shoot if we had to. What do you mean at any moment they can dial up 35, 40 points? There will be a game very soon where they have 42 points. But, okay, so in a game they can score that many points? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. I don't think I don't yeah, think when I say at full health the Giants can hang I mean that means that they're in the game that it's not 35 10 I could right. see I could see it being 35 24 that's still a game I mean up until the end there you, you assume that there's a chance that it's what 28 24 at one point Packers score a good yeah run, uh, I, I guess and seals it. I'm just saying they, they would hang around right now that, that that's what I think of their offense at the skill position I mean mm-hmm. the tight ends are kind of whatever uh, with uh, Tunyon and, and uh, Mercedes Lewis. Lewis. Um, but the skill positions with the two running backs and, and all of the wide receivers are pretty damn good. And they've had better wide receiver groups in the past. These are pretty young. And Romeo Dubs has had his, um, uh, I, I guess, missteps thus far mm-hmm. this year. But he's not bad. I mean, we saw him at the Senior Bowl. Um, well, let me ask you something. You know, after watching what we did against Justin Fields, like who's – basically turn into a run first quarterback. Do you feel a little better about how he can contain Aaron Rodgers from, you know, he's not a run around quarterback, but he's definitely shifting in the pocket and makes people miss. Do you feel a little better about how he can handle him as opposed before playing a team like Chicago? So glad you ask because <laughs> I do. Um, I feel that he, so here's where I think that the giants can hang around in this game a little bit. Like I said, their offensive line is having some issues, specifically both of their tackles. David Bakhtiari, I, I believe, is still nursing an ACL injury from last year, right? He's still recovering yes. from that. And Correct. he has looked shoddy thus far this year. On the right-hand side, they've had Elton jo- uh, Smith, who is simply not a tackle, in my opinion. This is mm-hmm. a guard and a center, uh, possibly, but not a tackle. And he has looked exposed thus far. Um, and I really like the idea be, because he's a little all over the place. He can be like really had with the combo we have of Aziz Ojolari and Kayvon Thibodeau. Aziz can really force him. So what, what, what I've noticed with Smith, and I'm not an offensive line expert, is that it seems to me that he's opening his hips way too early um, and just completely bailing out early, him. essentially yeah. bailing out to the outside rush way early. Um and I think that if they give him a steady dose of Aziz speed off the edge and then keep moving the edge rushers from side to side, move Cavallon over there, who's got, in my opinion, a little bit more variety in his repertoire of pass rush moves. And more specifically, he has a really good outside in move. And I think that with Aziz setting up that outside all the time, you switch him, you let Kavon do the outside in. And Kavon's really fast. I mean, if Kavon goes in and manages to get a quick rush on Aaron Rodgers. Yes, Aaron Rodgers is a very escapable quarterback, but Kayvon is not just a guy who's going to... He's not... He's not... Who am I trying to think? Like, Justin Tuck, I think. Like, you could run away from Justin Tuck, mm-hmm. right? I think Kayvon really makes Aaron Rodgers sprint at full speed to get away from him. So I feel that there is a shot for them to get after Aaron Rodgers. My biggest thing, and we didn't see it against um, Justin Fields... I think they need to spy Aaron Rodgers. Mm-hmm. I mean, if they're going to bring the blitz the way that they do, and I have seen no evidence in all of Wink Martindale's career that they will not bring the <laughs> we blitz. We were saying that at the, end, at the end of the game last week. It's like, we were, why, yes. why aren't we have like a, a safety or two way back? And you were just like, he doesn't do that. He just doesn't do that. 
Yep. So if he's not going to do it, like the last play or two of a game, he's not going to abandon ship for, for anybody. Yeah. So to me, if you're going to do that to a guy like Aaron Rodgers, who's not just athletic and fast, he's smart. He's a mm-hmm. smart guy, and he knows how not just to run away, but how to set it up so he has more room to run with eye fakes, pump fakes, etc. He's a very – I mean, come on. I don't need to say this. He's a very good quarterback. Um, to me, I, you got to spy the quarterback, and I would prefer if we mixed up how we spy and who spies. I mean, I think mm-hmm. you could spy him with love if he plays – He's got. He's nursing a concussion. Same play, I think, that Aaron Rodgers. Uh, Aaron Rodgers. Well, that's what heard. most of his. You know, most of his defense is based on deception and and, and trying to confuse you. It's not just all out gangbuster blitz. It's I, yeah disguising I, coverages. So it's also disguising who's going to shadow too. So I, I agree. I think you can do Love. I think you can do McKinney. I think you can do Crowder. I think you can. I, I mean, I think if you really want to mix it up, you can even mix in someone who's not fast enough just to keep throwing them off. Somebody like, yeah, I don't know, Jalen Smith. Mm-hmm. Um, just whatever. Just keep keep them guessing. Just because Aaron Rodgers is more likely to decipher the shenanigans you're trying to do doesn't mean you should stop doing them. And I'm not saying that there's a track record of Wink dialing back or anything like that. I'm just saying they should dial up. You know, mm-hmm. it's not like they're going to sit back and be like, "Well, we'll just let our uh, skills take over." Like, no. I mean, we no. we have to get after. They'll them. kill us if they do that. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers will pick us apart. The only thing really working in our favor from an offensive or from a defensive standpoint is that Alan Lazard is nursing an ankle. Um, how do you think? What, what do you think of Alan Lazard? He's solid. I mean, good enough that we we better you know we better pay extra attention to him because <laughs> it's the type of guy that can end up can look up and see his 150 yards against us. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I, yeah. I think he's he's a terror at like all three levels of the mm-hmm. of, of the route tree. You know what I mean? Like, ah, man, I I really just I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how we're gonna stop, especially with Fabian yeah. Moreau like being gimpy. Yeah, um, I mean, this is kind of one of those games where you know, <laughs> yeah, we know we're gonna come gangbusters and bring the house all the time, but I'm just worried on the back end for a guy like him just getting loose. You know. The, the only way we're not going to, we're definitely not going to win this game if we give up quick scores and quick, you know, long strikes. We have to make it so they have to work their way down the field. And that's my fear is like all of a sudden, you know, there's a busted coverage somewhere and it's a quick seven. So, oh, I, I mean, I don't know if we can hang with any team in the league for quick scores, right? Exactly. And a guy like Aaron Rodgers is, he, Strikes fear in me pretty much more than almost any other quarterback in the ability to do that. No matter who his receivers are. I would say I think that Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen are probably better quarterbacks than Aaron Rodgers at this moment in time. Maybe. Uh, but Overall I am package. More, I'm more afraid if there's three minutes left oh. and and we're, we're up by only six. I am more afraid of Aaron Rodgers than maybe any other quarterback in the league. Because I, might I think be a... Patrick Mahomes might try and do something silly. A little hero that... ball. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And I think the same thing with Josh Allen, honestly. Well, I'm gonna put they are. I'm gonna put Tom Brady still up in that category of like you know, there's two minutes left. Well, see, he in still a vacuum, scares me. In a vacuum, he doesn't scare me the same way as he scares me on the current team that he's on. Like he. He doesn't scare me in the same way Aaron Rodgers does, where like if, if a free rusher comes in, if we dial up a blitz and there's a free rusher at Aaron Rodgers and he gets out of it, we're probably fucked. He's probably running for 30 <laughs> yards. If we have a free rusher running at Tom Brady, it might end the drive. Legitimately. Yeah. I mean, it might end the drive. That's why in a vacuum, just talking quarterbacks, I'm he's a little bit lower on the list for me, but absolutely, yeah. Another mm-hmm. guy who who can tear apart whatever you have dialed up, read right, it immediately, right. and know exactly how to beat. Right. Him. If you try to prevent him anything, he's just gonna kill you underneath. He knows exactly where to go yeah. and how yeah. to throw it and whatever. All right, let's switch to the other side of the ball though. We don't know who's playing quarterback. Uh, we feel pretty confident that the two quarterbacks that will be active will be Webb and Jones. Mm-hmm. Uh, they haven't signed anybody else. I really don't think Tyrod Taylor is going to be well, able to play. The way you just said that, you know. Just because Jones is uh, active, does that necessarily mean he's going to start? Not at all. I, I said that like six times already. I, I don't know yeah. if he's going to start or not, but he is definitely going to be active. 
Okay. Yeah, because the way you said that, that that last time you said Jones and you said Webb and Jones, I'm like, hmm. That may. The more I think about that, that more might be the likely scenario. I don't know if it's more or not. Uh, it's it's very early. Unfortunately, we have to do this episode early as well. Which, by the right, way, this right. is the last fucked up episode we're gonna have to do. I think, unless one of us gets sick or something. Oh, we like have that. Thanksgiving. Oh yeah, we have the Thanksgiving game. God damn it! Those things <laughs> fuck up my whole week, man. <laughs> they really do. I mean, like if I have to condense our our the review of the game, then do the review episode, and then like, you know, do all the editing, upload the thing, and then like literally the next day I have to start doing preview work because we're doing the day after that, the preview episode. Well, we'll probably just do one episode that week. We'll probably just do like a, a, you know. You know what? That's a great idea. A a mega pod because like, let's be honest, most of you people probably are going to be off that week or leaving early and you're not going to be listening to podcasts anyway. So we're better off just doing one, put it out like, you know, Tuesday and then, yeah. All right, let's switch to the other side of the ball. Like I said, uh, we don't know necessarily who's playing quarterback. Um, Injury-wise, I I need to go through this because wide receiver is scary. Um, (laughs) You know, wide receiver has been scary, obviously. We've talked about it nonstop. Twitter is filled with people bitching about it. Um, It is officially scary this week. Kenny Galladay has an MCL sprain. Um, That is for real uh, Mm -hmm. and sucks. That is going to be at least four weeks in my opinion. Um, additionally, I don't even know when this happened. Richie James was a do not, did not practice today with an ankle. <laughs> Who the fuck would have ever imagined in July? Okay. In July, I'd be like, Oh my God, what are we going to do without Richie James? <laughs> yeah, in October, in October. <laughs> I really don't know. My, my, I am not banking on, but I am, there's a, beam of hope coming from my heart that we fly to England and we get to see Kadarius Tony and not just see him we get to see him really play what are your thoughts what are you, what are you putting what are what how many let, how many sides to the dice uh, are you rolling for that one let's put it this way i am not packing the Kadarius Tony jersey with me on the trip that's I oh, wonder I'm, i i can't wait if if he goes and he plays i'm clipping this exact moment and i just it's gonna that's be like fine. The biggest. Hey, no, no, I'm not not to clown on you. Just because it is the ultimate you scenario of you <laughs> not doing a thing. Just be like, I'm pretty sure that this is not, and then mushing it entirely. Oh, of course. Well, first of all, my mushing prowess is second to none. So hopefully, I'm reverse mushing this, and he comes out and has 170 yards like the Dallas game. But uh, yeah, I 189, I think. Was it 189 the total? I, I think so. It was something insane where I was like, oh my God, he almost had 200 yards. I, again, sometimes coaches leave little breadcrumbs about a guy like, you know, definitely the, you know, uh, Daniel Jones trotting him out for that little photo op is a breadcrumb that, yeah, he might be playing. I don't sense the breadcrumbs with Kadarius Tony. So I don't think he's playing. Well, unless you have you... some breadcrumbs I'm, I'm unaware of. No, actually, what if I told you that the breadcrumbs were intentionally not there for Green Bay? <laughs> uh, Is that really that upset? For, for starters, hasn't he been a did not practice like most of the last few weeks? Yeah, I don't think you're I don't think you can fake that. I, I, I think isn't there fines if you say like if he's listed as no, doubt- no, no, I, I'm not saying fake. I'm just saying there's no photo op of him running routes. There's no, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, he's on the injury report. He's listed as limited. Um, he practiced today, but you know, I, I, uh, th- there's nothing. There's no talk about him. There's no questions. I, I didn't see any questions about okay, let's, let's, his availability this, this week. Well, let's do this question then. Since okay, let's, you know, despite the fact I don't pack his jersey and he does play, I mean, what's a realistic pitch count he's going to have? I have no even, idea. Even in the, even in the context of this offense of you know guys aren't getting as many snaps as we maybe wanted or hoped or liked. I mean, I can't all of a sudden expect him to come out there. And my, my point being is that that's a lot of cloak and dagger for someone who, how, how is it a more lot? than likely not have that many snaps? Well, how is it a lot of, clo- I'm not saying that he's been on the injury report for the last four weeks for a surprise, just for this game. I'm saying not really talking about the fact that he was limited this week. Just, just in general, just not talking about him a lot. 
as just you know he hasn't he hasn't done shit this entire year. Why would Green Bay have to do an extra amount of game planning for him? They wouldn't. They wouldn't. Exactly. So by just not talking about him, he's just he's just limited. He's limited. He's limited. And then Sunday he's active and he's a huge part of the game plan. That would be something that really turns him inside out, right? I mean, I'm not saying that that's definitely going to happen. I'm just this is usually your level I, of conspiracy I, theory. Yeah, right? it is. And his skill set is something it's not like having Kenny Galladay, like all of a sudden out of nowhere, it's like, you know what he can do. You know, he's just basically a, a 50, 50 guy who catches Kadarius Tony is that, you know, breaking ankles guy where it's hard to game plan for a guy like him. So, well, especially if, if he's a big part of the offensive game plan where he's centered around it and it's just pretty much getting the ball to the most athletic guy you have. And that's not really, I, well, you have to kind of just send everybody and then he becomes the biggest distraction on the offense. Everybody else frees up. And that's where I go back to, you know, even if he does play, I think it's a limited pitch count just because of up to this point in the season, his availability. Like, you'd have to, you know, let's say he gets, you know, 15 snaps or 20 snaps only because just because he's okay to play, but he's not obviously 100%. You know, it's just, which may make it even tougher for a defense because, like, oh, there he is. You know, I I, I don't know. I, that I mean, would be some. He- That'd be some good 4D chess, and that would be great if it, that's the way it happened. I, I mean, I don't think I don't think that it's really that much 4D chess to not talk about a guy who's hurt, to just not really talk about it a lot, and just be like, yeah, he did a little bit more today, you know, whatever. I mean, I don't think there's any fine for being like for a guy who was limited to be a big part of the game plan and expecting yeah. him to play, and not just saying that. I don't think I, you have to say I expect him to play. Just be like, I don't know, he's limited today. He did some work. I think he's getting to be a little bit of a guy who's sort of out of sight, out of mind with everybody too. You know, I, it's just and like, I think that plays to the advantage. Oh yeah, for, sure. For that, like, yeah, that that's all I'm saying. That's all. I I'm mean, saying. like you know, uh, Kenny Galladay is he's topic one. Like, oh, what's the story with him? You know, it's Kadarius Tony. It's like, oh, he's he's on the list again. Oh, he didn't play again. He's unavailable. Oh, he's on the list. And after a while, it's just like you forget about him a little yeah. bit. So he's not the topic. So you're right. If that's, you know. I don't. Maybe, I don't think. Maybe. I don't think he's going to do anything. I was just throwing the idea out there. It's possible. I would love it. I would love to just sure. see him, even if he just goes out there on the pitch count and he has one of those mind-bending plays where he just, I don't know, whatever, makes it six guys look silly and score a touchdown. That'd be good game. for me. You know, if it's a wet track and you know mm-hmm. our defense is is causing problems for Aaron Rodgers and we have the running game is, is going, that one play may make the difference. I think so. Yeah. Um, if he does play, if he's there, I, well, first of all, I want to see him play. I want to see him play in England. I, I just think it's just the cool, and I think it's good for the game. Do you agree? People like the Saquon Barkley's, the Aaron. If, we're we're gonna go on a little tangent because I just set myself up for it, and I'm I'm, I'm feeling the rage bubble into my uh, veins here. I think that the London game, the Munich game, the Mexico City games, I think those are good things for the NFL. I also oh. think that sending the Jaguars when they're the worst team every single year didn't really help. But this kind of game where you get, and I'm not saying the Giants are good, but at least you have, for the first time ever in London, two teams with a winning record playing. You have a guy like Saquon Barkley who's leading the NFL in rushing yards and just making really sick fucking plays. You have guys like Aaron Rodgers who we were just you know glowing as being probably the best quarterback in the NFC. He's been one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL for like the last 20 years. These things are good for the game. They're good for the London games, which is also good for the NFL. Do you agree with any or all of that? I agree with all of it except for the Jacksonville part, and I'll get to that in a second. But now this is going to be my third London game, and the atmosphere around the stadium, like one was in Wembley, one was in Twickenham, it feels like a cross between the Super Bowl and a bowl game. You have – it's not just the two fans of the team going. You have – fans of basically all 32 teams showing up there. Now, they may not be coming over from America, but they're coming from Dublin. They're coming from Paris. They're coming from Munich. They're coming wherever expats are all over Europe. They're coming to this. So, you know, the league, well, it's still a, a, it's probably comparable to how the Premier League is popular here is what the NFL is popular over there, but they are giving it more and more attention. And, um, Having the marquee teams and the marquee names obviously helps. It, it just draws more attention to it. Um, there's, it's stars, you know, but 
the M- the N- the NBA is really popular because these guys LeBron's a star and Michael Jordan was a star that transcended the sport and Aaron Rodgers is a star. The New York Giants are you know a, an enormously popular team even though they've been pathetic for 10 years. The Jacksonville piece I think is a little different where yes they've been bad but because they come every year there are a lot of Jacksonville fans in England. There's also it's been unspoken whiffs about well maybe they'll move to London at some point. Especially because, you know, they're in a small market in Jacksonville. Their lease isn't that great. Their lease was running up. Um, Side Khan, their owner, you know, international business guy. So they've always been kind of an unspoken, like they may move here. So developing a fan base of a particular team as opposed to, oh, just, you know, stars coming over for a one and done also helps build the league. And it's also... There's three games a year in England now, three or four. So it's not just, well, the annual Jaguar game. It's, you know, That's you're, getting more, you're getting more teams rotated in. And there's also a game in Munich this year. The Bucks are playing there. Uh, there's the Mexico City game. So it's not just you're stuck with that one team. I just think it's genius because it's, a, it's an untapped market still. You know, I, I, I'd be curious to see in 20 years from now if you ever start getting any talent come over. Like the NBA seeded uh, Europe, you know, 20, 30 years ago, and a ton of talent comes from from the continent. I'd be curious if you ever start getting that. I mean, it's a lot easier to put up a hoop behind your house as opposed to playing football. But um, you know, for for a league that cares so much about TV revenue, building a fan base in, in the, the a densely populated continent like England, uh, Europe is great for the league. Oh, absolutely. I did, I did forget that. Um, I did forget about Jacksonville potentially moving over there mainly because I never really thought it would happen. Um, Me neither. I guess I kind of still don't, but I didn't know that they had actually built up a contingent of Jags fans over there. That's yeah. pretty cool. Well, do you think they will ever have the Super Bowl over in London? I don't know. What's weather like in February out there? And is uh, there a dome? There is not a dome. I mean, it had to be probably at Wembley because it's the biggest stadium and it has like all the super nice luxury boxes and club seats and all that. But it can't be worse than MetLife was in January, right? No, I don't think so. Um, but I also agree. I, I thought that was a bad idea. So, Yeah. Um. I don't know. I, I, I could and I couldn't. Um, you know, if, if for starters, a lot of the Super Bowl is not a lot, but it isn't a big part of it is celebrity tickets and sightings and whatever. Sure. But I mean, mo- most, most of the tickets sold are for fans, right? I mean, like. Mm, I think it's like, I want to say that the Giants got like 10,000 tickets for the last Super Bowl. And really? it was up to them how they want to disperse it between personnel, staff, season ticket holders. It's not a it's it's not like that, a bowl game. That's not wait. I, I mean, the attendance is mostly fans. Uh, yeah. Of of the two teams, mostly. Mostly, yeah. Over fifty percent of the tickets are for fans of the teams, right? I, I would say so. Yeah. Okay. You, you mean like a post like corporate types are just there to? Yeah, yeah. Corporate types, celebrities, people more, who are, are just are there for the event. Yeah. There are more fans than just. Hey, I got Super Bowl tickets. Right. Okay. So as long as that's still the case, uh, it's it's hard to imagine fans investing not just a, a flight to Arizona and then the tickets to the game. I mean, the tickets to the Super Bowl are already extravagant. Now you're adding on like essentially a thousand dollar flight because yeah. by the time you know who is going to the Super Bowl, those fl- I mean, like, I, yeah. I mean, you only have like two though, fucking weeks to get that ticket, and uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's but crazy. remember also, they're not as interested or concerned as much as the people in attendance as the TV audience. And I, I understand think, that. And yeah. I think you know, if you want to, the the bump up in TV ratings in America would probably be negligible, but the the bump up in uh, TV ratings in Abroad. England would be astronomical. Yeah, I mean, I have been. A big purveyor, 
purveyor. I don't even know if that's the right purveyor. word. Purveyor. We'll I, 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 I think I think that it's unfair the way the Super Bowl system is set up now, where it just kind of rotates between the same couple things, and that there is a possibility for home field advantage. I do think that there should just be a one site or maybe three neutral site places that they rotate through. Um, I, I think it's stupid that a team could potentially get a home field advantage. And, and and the field advantage, by the way, is not just the fans. It's literally the fact that they get to play on that. They know everything about that field. They're comfortable on that field. They're comfortable. They're in, in their house. Rooms. They're in their literal fucking house. So yeah. it's not just the field. It's not just the fans. I mean, um, I, I, to me, I think it would be cooler if even if they just built a fucking stadium, but like go That's to never Canton or something. You know what I mean? Like just never gonna find happen. a place, put yeah. it in fucking Kansas or something like never that. I don't happen. care. Because the Super Bowl, the Super Bowl is more than a game at this point. It's a, it's a week long extravaganza. You know, it's everything. It's and it, it's so much money it generates to these cities when it comes in for tourism. Like think of the places where it's always rotated to, and it's like the it's the biggest industry: New Orleans, Florida, L.A. I mean, you're getting it's a billions of dollars on their economic, uh, you know, impact for people staying, you know, all the taxes they get for hotels, all the car rental tax, all the money that's spent in the local economy. It's, it's ginormous. And, you know, they're not going to spend a, you know, a billion dollars to build a stadium that's used once a year. No, I, not, I don't think they're going to do that. Yeah. I, that's not gonna, I, I never thought they were going to do that, but it and would be co- cooler to just have three neutral sites and make them larger than life. Like places like the Coliseum are larger than life places. I know it's a piece of shit falling apart. Is it even around still? Where are you talking about? In Rome? No, the... L.A.? Yeah. That's in L.A. Uh, you'd, you'd have the Rams and, but and that's, the uh, Chargers. But it, it's not the same fucking... I don't care about the fans. That's what I'm saying. It, it's not the same stadium. It's not their house. It's literally uh, not their house. That, they don't play there. If you're talking about the same city, but just a different city, that's never, ever, ever, ever going to happen. No. I mean, they used I to never, have it. I never to... said any of this was going to happen. Just would be coolest. I know uh, it's I, not going to happen. It should it's... be It should be in one fucking larger-than-life stadium where it's, I'm not going to the Super Bowl. I'm going to the Coliseum or whatever you want to call it. Call, it, call mm-hmm. it the Olympia Dome, okay? I'm going to the Olympia Dome. Everyone fucking knows what you're talking about. You're going to the Super Bowl. You know what I mean? It should be. It should be. The, and, uh, the Super Bowl logo, all those pictures, it should be the outline of that fucking stadium with lights it, in the air. It should be massive. It should be an event. I don't want it to be a different place every fucking year. I think that's dumb. It's the third biggest sporting event in the world. Yeah. Behind to, the World Cup and Champions League final. Champions League and World Cup are both – they also rotate around. I know. There is I, no I, like iconic this is where it is. But, But soccer is a world thing. This is literally an American thing. And I know this. we started this conversation, do you think it would ever go to London? No, right. I don't think so. But but I, I do think that having it at a spot, a, a you know what I mean? Like just a, a mecca of football. Like we're going to this place. There's so much history on this field. You know what I mean? But there isn't, in, in, yeah, in, I guess. But, but in 50 years, when every Super Bowl has been played on this field, I mean, that's what that means for those players going there. They're not going to fucking SoFi where they play all fucking year every year. You know what I mean? Uh, we're quibbling over things. Yeah, this, this, I don't know. Is... I, I think you're. I to me, the Super Bowl is so big in and itself. It doesn't matter where it is. No, of course it doesn't matter. But to me, it would be cooler. If, that, 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 that's it. I mean, to cool. me, the coolest version of the Super Bowl is is at that. Is at a and a, a fucking. I don't know the mecca of football, and it's at one spot where nothing else ever is but in terms what, of football. I mean, I know we're going tangent wise even further, but where would we consider that mecca to be? Would it be? Green Bay? No, I mean, I, I would put it at, like you said, like a marketable city where, like, it can handle tourism, whatever. I mean, maybe Memphis or some shit like that. Um, somewhere where maybe it's warmer, you know, because you, know, you went to Indy, right? Right. For the 2011 one. And there's right. a lot of outdoor shit, but it was fairly cold, right? It was chilly. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it should probably be somewhere. Maybe, maybe in Birmingham, man. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe in Texas, maybe in Austin. Yeah. Is that is that obscene to suggest Austin? Yeah. I don't think so. I just don't think it makes a big deal of where it is. I think it's just, uh, I think it, it's it's un it's been unfortunate the last two years that uh, a host city has been one of the two teams, but it also has been only twice in 
almost. No, I mean, that's, that's part of it, but it's also the fact that we just rotate between basically like the same five stadiums all the time. It's it, the same five cities, same five state. It's just, it's just lame. At that even, point, why are even, we even rotating? I guess I, I don't even think about it. It's just, oh, that's where it is this year. I hope it's in New Orleans every. Yeah, I'd have it in New Orleans. Every what year. I'm saying is that the rotation does nothing for me. It doesn't spark any interest where it is this year or that year. That's what I'm saying. That's why it's to me it's I, not I, interesting I, where it is. I don't think I don't think the location of the game is anything that they're factoring as like oh we'll have better ratings here or no I don't think so either. Yeah, I think it's just which which city will provide the best deal for us to have it in this time, and they can also use it as a carrot to build a new stadium, which is don't. Un, Oh, I, I know that that all factors in. I know that yeah. everything I'm saying is not really part of their thing. For me as a fan, that that's what makes it the coolest okay. is is having that. Going to Miami is not as exciting as going to – like, like okay, for, for instance, the Pro Bowl is fucking stupid, right? And there's not even a thing anymore. But everyone right. knew what going to Honolulu meant. You know right. what I mean? That that's the kind of thing, and and that was for a game that nobody even cared about. When it's the Super Bowl, when you're saying I'm going to Austin, like we're going to Austin, you know, in the, in the locker rooms and stuff, like that means something. I, I don't know. As a fan, that's the coolest way. I know it makes no difference to the NFL, but that's that's how I feel about the Super Bowl. I don't know. I don't All know right. why we went there. But. <laughs> you are passionate about that. We've had this one before. I know. Offline, I mean, so. I I feel. Th- I think that things like that are little and they don't impact anything from the NFL side, but they impact things from the fan side, from the player side. Um, I, I, you know, we've, we had the same level of passion with the should Dallas be in the NFC East or Carolina. <laughs> Again, that to me is a purely fan thing. I think that that sparks rivalries. The closer the cities are that play each other twice a year, the more intense those rivalries get. Dallas, obviously, they have fans all over the place. But whatever. That To me, I know that makes no difference to the game. But for fans, I think it makes a difference. Um, and that's that's where I come from with all that. It's not really – I don't lay awake at night pining over Do you mean the, the fans are going to the games or just the fans in general? I think the fans in general. I think everybody. Even the people who just watch. I, I, or just the fans of teams that potentially could go. You know, if you're in the NFC Championship, I think it affects them. You know, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, man. Maybe it's just me. That's yeah, fine. What do you think out there? Let us know. <laughs> There's a whole fucking comment section for you guys. Um, all right. So we talked about the game. Give me your prediction. Well, I predict we're going to go to a nice pub and have some yummy Guinness. I predict we're going to meet up with a bunch of giant fans on Saturday night. Um, we're looking forward to meeting everybody. Um, don't even have it in front of me. Bad planning. Um, as for the game, I am, I am very pessimistic about Daniel Jones playing. Um, if he's out there, that's fantastic. I'm going into the mindset. He's not going to play. Um, I'm looking at some of the numbers here. Green Bay is 21st in the league in rushing defense. You combine that with our running game, which is leading the NFL right now. I think if we can do like the same thing we talked about in the last couple of weeks, control the clock, you know, if we can have the ball for over 40 minutes, you know, eat time, have Saquon go crazy, you know, it may be a game he has to carry it 30 times and maybe has five little quick receptions where it's just a little quick pass out in the flat for him. I think we have a chance. I don't think it's a very good chance, <laughs> and especially if Daniel Jones is out, I, we have zero chance. Um, so let's go with let's go with the game. I think it'll be a little closer than people think. I'm going to average in him playing and him not playing, and say we lose twenty eight fourteen. Damn, I thought we were going to end up with the same prediction here. We were, or at least very close. Um, I'm I'm not sure how Daniel Jones factors into this, but I will say I think that there will be a surprise active. I'm not sure who it is, but I do think that with all the injuries we have, there's going to be somebody that we're counting as out or just not considering that will be active and will impact the game in a huge well, way. And, and we'll be talking about that. If it's the NFL, it could be Tyrod Taylor. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Um, <laughs> Well, that just killed our chances. Yeah, that any partnership we have with the NFL just went out the window. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I think that, you know, you combine the fact that there's going to be something unexpected in terms of availability with um, the flukiness of the London game. I think it'll be closer than people think. But I do think we lose. I think this is going to be something closer to 30 to 20. Okay. I could I could buy either score, to be very honest. It was very close. 28-14, 30-20. I mean, that's like a couple extra points per team. And I'm thinking for the weather, you know, from being there a couple of times, it's not going to be like the rain. It's going to be more like that light, misty yuck, which makes things slick. So, you know, watch for footing for these guys, which, you know, always, to me, always seems to help the receivers. They know where they're cutting. Corners don't. So that's just something to keep an eye on when the game starts to see how the conditions are. Um. Real quick, let's bring it around the league because this is we're coming up on an hour here. Uh, Philadelphia is at Arizona. What are your thoughts? Two and two Arizona. Are they hanging around with four and zero Philadelphia? At home, I think Philadelphia is on a roll until right now. You know, when, until I'm proven wrong, I'm going to go with Philadelphia. Yeah, I, until Philadelphia is playing another team of a high caliber, or I've seen them lose, I'm going Philadelphia. And their schedule is pretty light this year too, if you yeah. look at it. Dallas is at the Rams. I feel pretty strongly that Dallas loses this game. I just can't believe they're going to keep winning with a backup quarterback. I yeah. mean, backup quarterbacks are backup quarterbacks. And Cooper Rush has been on a nice little roll, but um, you're playing a a playoff quality team. And that game's in L.A.? Yep. Yeah, I'm going to go with, uh, go with the Rams. And lastly, speaking of backup quarterbacks, Washington is playing Tennessee. Does it <laughs> Does it matter? <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, you know what? This one actually could go either way. Um, but I'm, I'm, I think that Tennessee takes just, just based on coaching alone. I think that Tennessee gets their ducks in a row and wins against Washington this week. They still have the best player on the field, even though he doesn't look as great as he might've had in previous years, but Washington's a mess. Um, as much as I'm going to say, I'm probably going to pick, um, Philly until they lose. I'm probably going to pick against Washington until they win. Yeah, I, and I or at least look good. <laughs> yeah, baby steps, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I am not going to do a college anything this week because I have no idea what I'm going to have access to. Uh, so I yeah, I agree. Um, we, our, our only hope is the uh, the Florida game will be the same time we're at the Giants happy hour, and uh, it will be on there. Yep. So. So that's it. Um, I'm really excited to go. I'm really excited to meet any and all of you who live there and will be traveling there. Um, so if you follow me on Twitter at football underscore grump right there, or you follow cranky fan at the cranky fan on Twitter, please DM us. We will, we would love to hang out, grab a beer, etc. Yeah. And actually where we're going to be is at the Wapping Tavern on Saturday. Um, a bunch of the, the UK giant fans that are out there have set this up. It's from seven o'clock until whenever, um, they'll have college football on. Hopefully they'll have my Rays playoff game on there too. Um, so that that's where we'll be at the Wapping Tavern in East or East London, other side of London from Parliament is where we'll be. Look, kids, Big Ben, Parliament. <laughs> um, all right, so we will see you all there, either on TV or at one of the pubs or at the game or on the streets or wherever we see you. We will see you, and we will have our next episode when we return Tuesday, so we can get some level of sleep. Yeah. And uh, we will see you all then. Cheerio. Go Giants. Go Giants. <laughs>